Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you today's word for August 27th, 2021. I'm teaching a series entitled, You Are Not a Mistake. You are destiny's child. I want you to know that. I want you to get that down in your heart. I want you to be able to look in the mirror and know that you are on this planet for God's intended purpose, that we serve a God who does everything on purpose, with a purpose. He is completely purposeful. He, he is not haphazard in any way. He sent you to this planet when he did and where he did because of why he did. He gave you not only an assignment, but he gave you the grace for the assignment. We, we learned that, that you were saved and called with a holy calling, not according to your own works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which God gave us in Christ Jesus before the world began. That's 2 Timothy 1 and 9. So we're learning a lot about God's assignment, God's call, God's grace, how we are predestined, how we're not a mistake. And I trust that as you get this down in your heart, you can go look in the mirror and say, as Jesus is, so am I in this world. That's 1 John 4 and 17. Why? Because I am not a mistake. So that said, what we've been doing this week is, uh, for the last few days anyway, we've been looking at Philippians 2 and 13, and I've been driving home the fact that God gives you the desire and the power. God gives you the desire and the power, and thank God for that, because if God gave you the desire for something and you build up that desire to desire what he desires for your life and then to pursue what you believe that God has put in your heart and you're pursuing this by faith, if you spent your whole life attempting to become that and then God didn't give you the power to do it, you would die unfulfilled, right? That, that could be very frustrating. This is where people delve into despair and disillusionment as it relates to God and religion and the church and all of that. And so even, even to the point where people get into depression and have to fight thoughts of depression, but thank God that he gives us the, the desire and also the power to do what he's called us to do. So this is God gives you the desire and the power part three. So if you haven't watched parts one and two, you should go back and check those out. But let's get into it again this morning. So I like to teach by both precept and example. I give you principles and precepts from the word of God, but I like to give you examples as well. Today, we're going to look at examples of the desire and the power. So Philippians 2 and 13, I'm going to read it from two translations. The New Living Translation says, for it is God who is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. The easy to read version reads, yes, it is God who is working in you. He helps you to want to do what pleases him. And then it gives you the power to do it, <laughs> man. That's amazing. So he helps you to want to want what he wants for your life. He, he helps you to build up a desire to desire what he desires for your life. And then he gives you the power to do it. So what does this mean for you today as it relates to examples? I'm going to give you some examples now. As I get into these examples, I pray that, that you can connect with them, right? Because it's oftentimes you can see something in the abstract, but when you connect with it, when you can relate to what the Bible is saying, that's when it becomes powerful to you. So let me give you some, some examples that you can connect with. I'm going to give you four or three examples, really. And then a fourth point. So the first one is uh, Abraham. So Abraham, God gave Abraham the desire and the power. Let's talk about it. So Abraham, when we come to know him in scripture, he is known as Abram and he's living in Ur of the Chaldeans. And so, so he's 75 years old. His wife is 65 years old. They, they don't have any children and they are idol worshipers. He did nothing to earn or to deserve the call of God on his life. This was all God's idea. And so your life is about God's idea, not your idea. Your life is about the things that were birthed in God's heart and not in your heart. But God walks up to or manifests himself to this man, Abram, the idol worshiper in Ur of the Chaldeans and says, listen, I've decided to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. I'm, I want you to, to leave this place. I want you to go and I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to bless all the families of the earth through you. I'm, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. This was all God's idea. But then... What happened? God, God had to help Abraham develop a desire for the things that God desired for him, right? And so, so you, oh, you have to build up that desire for what God desires, because if not, then you can't live the life of faith. The life of faith is me attempting to receive 
what God is revealing to me, even when it doesn't make sense, even when I have no sense from evidence to support it. And so there was no sense from evidence to support the fact that he was going to be a father of many nations. He was married to his wife for years. She couldn't have babies when she was 18 and she was 65 at the time. And so he built up the desire to have babies. He built up the desire to be the father of many nations. He built up the desire to be who it is that God was calling him to be. Thank God for that. But then God had to give him the power because if God gave him the desire without the power, he would have died unfulfilled. So 24 years later, 24 years later, now Abraham is like 99 years old. His wife is 89 years old. And so at that point, they still didn't have the promised child yet. And God had to give them the power at that point. So God had given them the desire. But then we serve a God who will also give you the power. The Bible says Paul was talking about this and Paul wrote it this way in Romans chapter four. He said, Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He considered not his own body now dead, even though he was about a hundred years old, his stuff from the waist down was not working anymore. And her stuff had never worked, but he believed God. He believed he was fully persuaded that what God had promised he was able to perform. And so, so he believed in a God who could give life to the dead, resurrect some stuff. And boom, they had a baby when he was a hundred years old and she was 90 years old. And this baby, Isaac became the legacy, became the, the vehicle, the conduit through which the legacy was manifested for what God said. So God gave him the desire, but then God gave him the power and thank God that he gives us both. Say amen to that. All right. Number two, Gideon. Let's talk about Gideon for a minute. So God gave Gideon the desire and the power. When we meet Gideon, Gideon is a scared farmer. He is, he is hiding, right? He's threshing wheat, hiding, and he's a scared farmer. And, and at this time, Israel is under siege. So Israel is under the control of, of invading forces. And so now he's hiding because he doesn't want to be seen. And God calls him and says, listen, basically God had called him to lead a revolution. And, and so God was calling him to lead a, a, a military revolution against the occupying force. But the problem was that, that Gideon didn't see himself that, that way. God called him a mighty man of valor. Gideon was like, I don't know. Uh, uh, hold on. Hold on. God, Gideon says to the angel, I don't know if you know how this thing works, but there's like 12 tribes in all of Israel. And out of all the 12 tribes, my tribe is the least of all the tribes. And then if you take all the men in my tribe and line them up, I'm the least of all the men in my tribe. And so Gideon saw himself as the weakest man from the weakest clan. And God was calling him a mighty man of valor because God always speaks to your 2B stage from your right now, right now stage. And so, so Gideon had to believe. Gideon had to build up a desire. Gideon didn't want no fight. Gideon was not a fighter. He was not trying to fight nobody. And, and God had to build a desire in Gideon to fight. And so, so then he was like, okay, fine. After he built up the desire, then God had to give him the power because I don't, I don't have time to tell you the whole story, but then God did something in Gideon. Gideon led 300 men against about 135,000 men. This was one of the most lopsided victories in military history, about 300 against 135,000. And since God was with Gideon, it wasn't even a fair fight. So God had to give him the desire, but then God had to give him the power to do it, right? So we serve a God that gives us both. God is not going to leave you out there hanging. He will give you the desire, and then he'll put it super on your natural. He will give you the power to do it. Let's talk about Peter. Let's talk about Paul. I'm going to talk about them together, Peter and Paul. So um, Paul, let's talk about Paul first. So God called Paul, who was the most educated of the apostles, right? Within the law of Moses, God called him to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. God took Peter, who was an uneducated, you know, un, unsophisticated <laughs> fisherman, and God called him to preach to the, to the Jews, to the most learned men of his time. So let's talk about, so, so Peter was raised as Simon, Simon the fisherman. So here you have Simon the fisherman. By the time Jesus met Simon the fisherman, he was running a fishing business. And so he was known as Simon the fisherman. He was an Israelite running a fishing business. He was not part of the Jewish religious elite. He was not part of those who were educated in the law. He was not part of that in crowd. He was, he was just a blue collar, hardworking entrepreneur who, who was, had a little bit of a temper. He was a hothead and he spoke out of turn all the time. And God called him to lead the New Testament church. So God had to build the desire in Peter, 
right? To do this thing. God had to build a, desi a desire inside of Peter to fish for men instead of fishing for fish. And so, so Peter didn't know how to do this thing. Peter didn't even want to do it. But then God put that desire in him. He gave him the desire. I'm going to talk about the power here in a minute. So let's talk about Paul. Paul was raised as Saul of Tarsus. He was groomed. Now, conversely, he was groomed. He was being groomed. He was being prepared. He was being mentored. He was selected. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, right? He was being prepared to be part of the Jewish religious elite. He studied under Gamaliel, the greatest teacher of the law at the time. And so he was there, like he was part of that in crowd. He was being prepared to be part of that in crowd. When he was old enough, he led the movement against Jesus. He led the movement against the cause of Christ. He was having Christians imprisoned and stoned and, and burnt at the stake and eaten alive in Colosseums. And he was the man that was leading the movement against Jesus, against Christianity, against the cause of Christ. And he was doing this as part of the Jewish religious elite. He was, he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He was being prepared. He loved this thing. He thought he was doing the right thing and he thought he was doing it for God. And God says, now I'm going to pull you out of that and I'm going to go call you to preach to people that you don't even deal with, non-Jews. I'm going to, I'm going to lead you to preach to the non-Jews. So all that stuff you prepare for, you're not going to be able to use it, <laughs> right? And so God had to then give him a desire to want to do that. He had to leave everything that he knew. He spent three years at home in Tarsus by himself, basically dying to himself and dying to everything that he has spent his whole life. Think about that. You spent your whole life becoming a person, a persona, an identity. And then God comes to you and says, you've been living with a false ID and says, no, that's not who I called you to be. I want you to die to that. And I'm going to give you a new identity. I'm going to, I'm going to, I've called you to be somebody else. I want you to die to Saul of Tarsus. And I want you to live as the apostle Paul. And, and, and the people that you had no dealings with before, I want you to go hang out with them. And I want you to go preach to them. And the people that you had all the dealings with before, I don't want you to hang out with them. And I'm not going to let you talk to them. My God, I mean, so God had to give them the desire to do it. And then God had to give them the power to do it. So for Peter to minister to the most learned of his day, and he was an uneducated man. He had, he was, you, you could say, you know, you think of Peter, you think of uncouth, unprepared, you know, uh, frazzled even. Somebody that was ready to fight. He cut the joker's ear off when they tried to get Jesus, right? And God called him to, to, to minister to the most prepared men of his day. And then God takes somebody like Paul and says, listen, I want you to build up a desire that I'm going to give you the power to go minister to the Gentiles. He went on four missionary journeys. He wrote half the New Testament. Why? Because God gives you the desire and God gives you the power. Number four, and finally, I'm going to close with this. The last three days, I've been teaching you about the desire and the power. And, and now I'm giving you examples that you can connect with. I pray that you can identify with these examples. It boils down to this. God made plans for you from the foundations of the world. I hope you know that by now. Before your mother met your father, God already had plans for you. You, you are not a mistake. You were born because of God's intended purpose. You, you did nothing to earn or to deserve those plans. Like, just like, like Abraham, he did nothing. Like you could say Paul, he did nothing. Matter of fact, Paul fought against it and God called him anyway. It, Peter did nothing to become the leader of the New Testament church, right? I mean, so, so you, this is not about your, you earning it or your merit or your, or this is not about performance-based religion. I hope that, that you could get delivered from performance-based religion. God called you by grace. You cannot disqualify yourself from something you never qualified for in the first place. Jesus qualified you. So open up your heart to the call of God on your life. I pray that you develop a desire for God's desire for your life. And God will give you the desire and then he'll give you the power to do it. He's not going to give you the desire and then not give you the power. Because if God gave you the desire and then not give you the power, you would die unfulfilled and you would spend your whole life attempting to do something that you can't do unless God does it because God calls us to do things that we can't do without him. So thankfully, you know, God doesn't do us that way. He gives us the desire and he gives us the power. The best idea you could ever have is to live your life based on God's idea for you. 
The best thing you could ever do is believe what God believes about you. I want you to get to the point where you can look in the mirror and believe what God believes about you. God has plans for you. God wants to use you for his glory. And if you ever get to the point where you believe what God believes about you and you're willing to die to self and die to your limits and give yourself over to God, then God, this is John 14 and 10, God will live in you. He will give you the words. He will perform the work. He's the one that's working in you. That's Philippians 2 and 13. And he's doing this all for his glory. He would do this through your life. And you would, you, and at that point, Ephesians 3 and 20 kicks in, you, you will, you'll realize that you're living a life that far exceeds anything you asked or thought or even imagined according to the power that works in you. What's that power? The Holy Spirit. I'm a, I'm a testament. I'm an example of that. I'm a witness. I'm telling you. I'm already living the life that I never imagined. And it's by God's grace and it's for God's glory. So the day you choose to die to self will be the day that you start living, like living for real, for real. Because when you die to self, you die to your limits. You die to the limitations of your humanity. You die to your resume. So you don't have to qualify for everything. God can qualify you. You, you don't have to have the money for stuff. God has ways of getting you money. God has millions of ways to get you millions of dollars to do what he's called you to do. And so, so if you believe and you open up your heart to believe what it is that God has called you to do, then listen, at that point, your life is not about you anymore. Your life is all about God. And one day, and if you keep living like this long enough, you're going to get up one morning and realize, man, if you're married, you'll say to your, your spouse, hey, babe, man, I don't even... I remember, remember, I always said I wanted to do that. I don't even, I don't even have that desire anymore. It's like I've, I've died to my desires. I realize now that some of those things were selfish desires. Some of those things were things that, that, that were birthed in my heart and not in the heart of God. And, and now all I want is what God wants for me. And guess what? God's plans are better than your plans. His desires are better than your desires. And when you pursue his desires, you're going to wake up one morning and realize that you're, you are living an amazing life. It's the grace life. It's the grace life. Because at that point, you, you, you're like, wow, God has called us to do that. Man, babe, can you have ever, I never would have, you know, who would have thunk it? You know what I'm saying? That's not good English, but it's good doctrine. Who would have thunk it? You know, who would have thunk it? Wow, look at us now. It's the grace of God. God has called us to do things and we're doing it. And we're doing it by his grace. And we're doing it for his glory. Why? Because God gives you the desire. And then God gives you the power. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice. This was not one of those preaching messages, but I wanted, I, I trust that this penetrated your heart and, and it encourages you to become who it is that God has called you to be. Say this over your life as we close out the week. Father, this is a season of leveling up for me. I level up by believing what you believe about me. All I want is what you want for me. All I desire is what you desire for my life. So thank you, Father, for giving me both the desire and the power to do what you've called me to do. I die to sin. I die to self. I die to selfishness. I die to my limits. My life is all about you. Now, Father, you're free to do through me whatever you desire. Greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word, so please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, then go to todaysword.org. There's a big red subscribe button. Click on it. Put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, it's Friday morning, so I like to say a few things on Friday morning. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, do so. YouTube.com forward slash Rick Pena. Subscribe to the channel. You can get the podcast too. Go to the Apple iTunes store, search for Rick Pena, subscribe to the podcast. But listen, on Fridays, I like to give you an opportunity or at least remind you that, that you can be part of this ministry. So in the Dominican Republic, um, school is supposed to open on September 20th, and we are almost done with the first floor of our school. And uh, we just had to send another $50,000 down there to finish up some things. And now we got to buy... Um, desk we got to buy desk and blackboards and whiteboards and and you know office supplies and all of that kind of stuff and so if you want to be part of that if you want to be part of if you want to get in on it go to ripministries.org 
click on the donate button and make a donation. No donation is too small. No donation is too large. All the donations in the United States are tax deductible. Get in on this thing and the grace of God that's on this ministry, you'll be a partaker of that grace. I love you. God loves you more. Do me a favor. Go into the chat. Leave me some comments in the chat. I go back and I read those and share this message on your social media, on your timeline and with your friends. Have an amazing day. Have an amazing weekend. Walk in God's grace. God bless you.